Hey everybody, um, there is a lot of uh, anecdotal material uh, spread across the uh, world of Greyhawk that kind of implies that there was a lost golden age uh, way in the past. In a number of cases, it might even be more than one lost golden age. So that's what we're going to talk about today on Greyhawk Ragnar. <music> So there are a couple of different uh, indicators that there was something going on in the distant past in the world of Greyhawk. Um, we see uh, in, for example, in the Dungeon Master's Guide when it's uh, talking about uh, various um, artifacts and relics, we get a glimpse that there was some sort of technological era that happened before the current era of Greyhawk. Um, we see things like um, the machine of Lum the Mad and the mighty servant of Luke O and, and things like that. Um, the uh, Queen Alyssa's marvelous Nightingale. There's, there's a number of indicators that there was something going on technology-wise uh, in the distant past. Um, because the, the way these things are described, I mean, they have lots of switches and levers and things like that. But one, uh, the, the machine of, uh, the servant of Luke O uh, seems like it has fiber optic cabling inside. I mean, there's a lot of indicators uh, that it's high tech. And um, now you could play this off in the same way that we see in uh, Expedition to the Barrier Peaks, where it's a high technology uh, stuff that has come into Earth from outside, from some other planet or uh, some other dimension or something like that. You could play it like that, and you could say that these technological items are actually artifacts from a different world that happen to have ended up on, uh, on Earth. Um, I kind of like the idea, though, that there's a kind of lost civilization in the distant past. Uh, it gives um, it, it gives Earth kind of a uh, a Vancean dying Earth vibe, uh, you know, where there's actually a degeneration uh, across time from a technologically advanced civilization uh, thousands and thousands of years ago to the more um, more magical. More, uh, less technologically advanced, um, but more magically advanced world that we see in the published uh, material from uh, you know, from the, the the gold box and and so forth. Um, I, I really like that idea because it, it allows you to a have a uh, you know the occasional um, uh, technological item from the elder past kind of come in to the world, uh, but it also gives that in that. Uh, that implication that the world and, and civilization is so much older than we think it is. Um, you know, even before the Suloys Imperium uh, was destroyed, even before the Suloys Imperium existed, there was uh, still yet another strata of, of technological advancement and civilization that happened way, way, way in the distant past. I really like that idea, um, you know, that there's layers and layers and layers, and if you keep digging down, eventually you'll get to more advanced stuff, kind of like in Planet of the Apes, where they can't understand, you know, Cornelius is digging, and there's, uh, you know, the things get more and more primitive, and all of a sudden, boom, there's another layer of items that are suddenly more advanced, and that's the paradox that he can't understand. Um, I kind of like that idea, uh, if you apply it to Greyhawk. Um, now, the other idea that we have is that magic itself uh, has... It was more powerful in the past than it is today, and in, well, today being 576 to 601 in the common year, um, that um, we have indications that not only was magic more powerful in the past, but that the the decline of magical power is something that's still going on, and we actually see that um, in the gold box in the guide, I think it is. Uh, no, it's in the um, it's in the glossography, uh, where uh, the the editor uh, telling you know how the the, the book the in universe book came to be uh, mentions that um, hundreds of years after 576, uh, magic is not a lost art but it is a dying one, and that kind of leads me to to deduce that magical power overall is becoming less. Uh, you know, less intense over the over the course of centuries, and that 
fits in with something that we see in Manual of the Plains. Uh, in the first appendix, they have a list of uh, different ways to define prime material planes. Um, you know, the one is... Um, uh, what is it here? The physical factor um, is like sentience and thought and things like that. There's a magical factor and there's a temporal factor. Uh, but the magical factor goes from a 10 where universal spell casting among all races capable of sentient thought um, uh, and then it goes to zero which is like the baseline D&D &D rules uh, where uh, most individuals of sentient races can cast spells if given training. Uh, magic users must study and clerics must pray. To a negative 10, uh, no magic creativity or imagination exists. Um, our own uh, world is about a negative 6, it seems. Um, so, you know, just to give you an idea. Um, and although it doesn't specifically say it um, in the... Uh, in in the um, in the text, but it kind of implies that there can be a slide from one end of the of the scale to the next uh, in terms of the magical factor of a prime material plane. So it can start off at say um, a negative at a at a five at a an eight where spells of 11th level magic are possible and there are no saving throws against magic. Then there's a, a magical factor of uh, of five where you get 10th level spells and magic users can cast an unlimited number per day. Um, uh, uh, three, you get magic of ninth level spells, but no spellcasters need to study for their spells. They can just have them. You know, so there's a whole gradation there. And I kind of like the idea that where we are in the world of Greyhawk in 576, uh, in the published era, um, is kind of midway on that scale sliding from more magical to less magical and in, and this also gives an idea of how the um, twin cataclysms that we read about could have happened so let's say that the uh, reign of colorless fire um, is actually an 11th level spell and or a 10th level spell or something like that and same thing with the invoked devastation it was you know it was a spell cast by somebody who could cast a 10th level spell um, you go from that level of magic where those higher level spells are possible down to the current era where you only get ninth level spells so that explains why that magical power was lost you don't need um like i know later on they kind of retconned it um and there's like some device from hades or something that caused it i forget the exact uh, thing but there was some some artifact that they that that, that was created to explain the the uh, invoked devastation and Rain of Colorless Fire, um, but y if you look at it from this perspective, where magic just used to be more powerful, and then now it's kind of slowly become less powerful as the centuries have worn on, that explains how they could have cast those higher level spells to create those vast um, nationwide effects. Um, and I kind of like that idea again, because it gives, it gives a, a, a sense of depth to the setting, and it also gives a sense of melancholy, because eventually you realize, and the people in the setting themselves are going to realize, that magic just goes away. Um, and I know there was a, it was a Philly, Jose Farmer wrote The Magic Goes Away, it was a, a, a whole series of books like that. Um, I, th I, think he w I think that was the author, I'm going from memory, so I might be wrong. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not an uncommon theme. And you, in fact, you get that same idea in the Dying Earth novels. Um, and I know Gygax was a fan of Vance and the Dying Earth, so it's very possible that he had that kind of in mind, in the back of his mind somewhere. Um, you know, where, where today things are just less magical than they were. That also explains the creation of artifacts. Um, in the past, th because there were more powerful magics available, those magics could be used to create more powerful artifacts than are possible today. You know, today you can still create a plus four sword, um, you know, but something approaching the level of a, um, I don't know, a rod of seven parts, you know, might be beyond the current possibility uh, of, of, of the world. So, um, you know, I kind of like that idea. I kind of like the idea that there was uh, technological advancements in the distant, distant past, and they gave rise to a magical civilization, and now the magical civilization is um, going away as well, uh, and maybe we're going to see a rise of technology again in a kind of a cyclical 
uh, thing. In fact, I really like that idea that there's there's periods of magic and periods of technology, and they kind of slowly rotate one into the other um, in a great vast cycle uh, of the ages. I like that idea too, and I think that fits in with what we know about the prehistory of uh, the world of Greyhawk. So, anyway, hope uh, hope this uh, got a little creative juices going in you. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please remember uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, uh, try to hit my uh, Patreon. Uh, the blog has lots of free downloads. Another uh, download went up last Tuesday. Um, and uh, if you uh, want to, you can buy something off the web store. All the links are below. And um, you know, let me know in the comments what you think of this. Is this something you might use in your campaign uh, in some way or other? And um, I will talk to you later. Thank you.